This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by Gazelle. Time to get our HD Nation on Mr. Heron. What fancy new... Actually, plasmas are not dead. No. Plasmas are here. You are excited about the color fidelity of Samsung's latest 51-inch plasma. They're best. Their current best plasma TV right now would be their uh, D8000 series. Mm -hmm. uh, D for this year, basically 2011. Last year was the C series. Uh, for Samsung, all of their TVs, when they get that 8000 moniker on it, that's usually their premium model. This is this year's plasma, the 51-inch PN51D8000. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, there's this version, it's 51 inches. They also have a larger 59 and a 64-inch version available as well if you want. The 51-inch version goes for about 1,700 bucks online, two grand for the slightly larger version, and the $2,700 price tag for the 64-inch version. Not bad, that's good value really for the screen size you're getting. Big plasma. That's giant, actually. <laughs> uh, Built-in Wi-Fi, as with a lot of the premium TVs nowadays, mm -hmm. uh, that also allows you to stream videos and music stored on your local network, has great mm -hmm. functionality for that, as well as you can attach a local storage device, like a USB drive or something right to the USB port cool. on the back. Uh, four HDMI inputs, uh, thin frame design, a little over an inch thick, uh, really nice. Uh, the stand, well, take it or leave it, it's that crossbar design, it's kind of a, it's a, it's an X. It's a big Chrome X. Uh, it's it's if you're actually wall fairly it, stable. It's just the putting it together is probably, you need two people to put it together. Without a doubt for this one. It's uh, mating the stand to the TV can be just a little, it's not hard. You just got to do it just right. But anyway. You should only be doing that maybe once. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, as with most Samsung TVs nowadays, the, the internet enabled ones, this has the app store loaded up actually. Ooh. Speaking of which, we're right on there. Uh, also <laughs> includes the usual selection of uh, premium content providers like your Hulu, your Vudu, MLB Baseball. Uh, menu navigation. Normally when I start digging into these TVs with all these additional internet functions and features, they can get a little sluggish, but this right. one was snappy. Uh, very much so, it was nice. Finally, I've got a TV that feels like I can keep up with all the assets trying to throw at you. Uh, the tactile feedback of Samsung's new Super Remote. Same thing we saw with the, the LCD, the D8000 LCD. It's the double-sided wedge complete with a keypad on the back, which is really nice. Uh, wireless, little screen up there to see what you're typing as you're typing it. Uh, still a great remote and uh, so much more improved compared to the C8000 last year's plasma remote, which while pretty, it was just a, a slab of plastic that had no tactile feedback whatsoever. This is a little bit better. 3D functionality, of course. 3D TV, <laughs> comes with a pair of glasses. Uh, two were included in the box that I got. This represents Samsung's more expensive model the, with the uh, with the uh, wireless system on the back. It's as so well funny because it's it, they're like, okay, these these glasses are too big, so we're going to put these big lumps behind your ears. Well, that's where they put the power, right. and it also kind of balances the weight, I think, of the frames too. So you they have actually, less weight right yeah, on the Yeah, I don't feel like nose. like they're about to tear my nose off the front of my face. Those are about I want to say 140 bucks. These are the 50 dollar ones. Likewise, uh, I think you can get two. You used to be able to get two free pairs. I don't know if that deal's still going on. Uh, otherwise, active shutter technology, so you're getting the full resolution in, in each eye. Although that. You know, we're still seeing if the passive glasses, does it really prov provide full detail or not with the, right. with the 1080p content? That's another story. Uh, getting right into the benchmark results for this TV, I gotta straight up say, the D8000's color controls were some of the best I've ever used. Uh, I was able to basically fine tune the colors and tweak away at the gray scale to my heart's content. And, or at least as far as yesterday went, right. until studio time, they kicked me out of the studio while I was trying to adjust the TV further. <laughs> but take a look at this graph real quick. This shows the before, uh, the goal here of RGB mixing, mixing red, blue, and green, is to get, basically, if they're all at 100% and tracking just perfect along there, that makes a really nice, consistent shade of white from a dark gray on up through peak white. Mm -hmm. uh, this is okay. The, the, the CIE chart here shows where the actual colors measured, primaries and secondaries, the circles being where the actual measurement is, and the square being the ideal target. This is a little off. This is actually a little concerning. This was the default setup for custom configuration. Right. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't actually take a measurement of the, of the movie mode itself. The default movie mode was a little bit better than this, but this was all a little off, but just to show you what can happen though, I'll scroll down here a little bit. This is what I did just using the basic tools to get the grayscale to balance a little wow. closer to 100%. And the really nice thing though, and you can see also with the CIE control, the color control, I was able to pretty much dial all of them in except for red. Red remained pretty oversaturated, uh, a pretty strong red overall, but, uh, but otherwise, this is a phenomenal result, and even better so, uh, this TV incorporates what they call a 10-point control. So at every step along that, that grayscale RGB balance, where, you know, 20, 30, 40, I'm able to go into each section, each like at 10, at 20, at 30, at 40, and then make further fine adjustments just at those points to help really tighten up that graph. Uh, 
and it actually worked. That's the big deal there. <laughs> Normally that controls hit or miss on every TV I've tried so far. Usually I end up ignoring it because it really doesn't work, but in this case, it really took it to a new level of calibration mm -hmm. where I'm, I'm approaching just an ideal result with the TV itself. Right. Uh, bottom line, simply, I, lo I love it. Uh, however, I will say that Panasonic's VT series, the new VT30, will likely win the contrast battle. Their ability to produce black on Panasonic's plasma mm -hmm. is, a, is a little bit darker than you're going to see on this TV. <laughs> so if you're sitting in a pitch black room or in a very, very, uh, what they call a, a critical viewing environment, mm -hmm. and contrast is the most important thing, I would lean more towards the Panasonic for, for just performance for color though and the ability to really dial it in excellent video processing and all those other features too that I come to just you know expect out of any decent TV nowadays Samsung's got it and they have some nice internet features as well and the other capabilities but when it comes down to just straight picture performance this is up there with some of the best TVs I've ever looked at and I, and I like it that's a thumbs up oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's really a it's good to see it's good to see a couple of manufacturers still putting out really great products, and and for anybody who thinks Plasma's dead, uh, there, there are two fine examples. I want to get in that VT30. Uh, we haven't had that in yet for review, and mm -hmm. it's hopefully I can get it in while we still have this in, and we can do a little side-by-side -side comparison. Before we, we got some viewer questions. Before okay. we get into those, who should be buying a Plasma versus who should be buying an LED flat panel? I look at the room environment. I think that really will determine uh, which TV would be better suited for you. If you're dealing with any kind of light that's going to strike the screen, sunlight in particular, Plasmas really don't put out enough light to keep the image uh, as bright as it should be to produce a well contrasted picture in a brightly lit room. Mm -hmm. That's where an LCD with more of a matte finish screen would probably be ideal. But if, if you have even relatively okay light control, like in my case at home, I have a plasma screen that's in front of a big window. Right. But it's not, it's pointed away from it, so it's catching, you know, just the shadow. I find that's just fine. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you need wide viewing angles, a very consistent picture from right. anywhere in the room, if you have a wide seating area with lots of uh, other people usually watching TV with you, that's another reason to consider a plasma display. Um, is the whole sports action movies, you know, still leaning towards plasma, or does it really matter anymore? If you leave on the smoothing effects mm -hmm. that improve 60 hertz video, you're going to get great detail out of a modern LCD. Mm -hmm. Plasmas already do that, so there's no problem there. I, personally, I find plasmas a little easier on the eye to view. They're, they're a unique display type in terms of how it actually produces the image. And for that, I really find them ideal video watching displays. Maybe not so much for gaming. I have found that on certain TVs, uh, plasmas in particular seem to be more prone to lag, mm -hmm. audio delay in particular. Uh, your, the, the one I have at home, I have a plasma at home where I have to set a delay of about 100 milliseconds in order mm -hmm. to get the audio and the video to sync up just right. And if you're not prepared to do that or make those adjustments, that, that might be something you might be like, hmm, if I'm a hardcore gamer, you can't deal with a 100 millisecond delay there. So <laughs> No. Not uh, otherwise. Most people would look at this TV just by looking at it and go, oh, it's an LCD, it's nice and thin, it's got a relatively slim bezel to it. Uh, it it's really, in, unless you, wow. it's really, yeah, it's maybe a little over an inch. So it's, it's a tough call. Energy consumption, if, if, if a bright picture and to save energy is, are key features in what you're shopping for, then an LCD would also be a great option. It'd be something I'd probably be more tuned toward than say a plasma display. But if you're a video junkie and you got the right room, uh, <laughs> don't, don't rule out your plasmas, don't. Please. First question comes from Steve who writes in, help me Robert Heron and Patrick Norton, you're my only hope. <laughs> I'm in the market for a home theater PC, but I really don't feel like building my own unless it is significantly cheaper. Operating system is not a factor in cost, that money's already spent, Windows 7 Ultimate X64. I need some recommendations for a box that will play media, media from media, <laughs> media. Let's media. get some Greek references in there. <laughs> the box that will play media from my home network, AVI, DivX, MKVs, etc. plus whatever optical media I'll throw at it. Blu-ray would be nice to cut down on devices around the TV, but it's not a requirement. The box will need to have DVR functionality. Output would be to an HDTV via HDMI. I haven't convinced my better half on the audio <laughs> side of things yet, so that's another consideration. Any help you can offer is greatly appreciated. Regards, Steve in lovely Centerville, Ohio. Yeah, well, I did a little looking around on the internet, and I checked out that, that little compact box Dell used to make, mm -hmm. and I don't think they're making that anymore. So the Delzino? So. The Delzino yeah. is gone? I, it wasn't listed last night when I was taking a look, but... <laughs> I went back to an old standby that we've had great results with, a company called Puget Systems. Uh, basically, they make, you're looking for that good HTCP with build options that are pretty flexible. Well, uh, Puget's custom computers, they're solid, highly configurable systems. This is the Echo 2, actually. They have several Echoes available, but uh, it gets you a dual or core, uh, quad core Intel processor. Uh, you have options for RAM, storage and tuner options. You can add that Blu-ray drive if you want to. 
That's there for another $161. It's kind of expensive when you get into those thin drives. Uh, you can also, let me see here, don't need an OS. You can skip the OS as well, get your money back on that. And that's pretty cool. Uh, likewise, I, I think this you could put together a great system here and it will not only be quiet, but have some expandability and just great support. And it also has that room for that optical drive too. So if you do want to have that Blu-ray drive, you have that. However, I will say that if you're looking, considering a do-it-yourself option, I have to give a shout out to uh, Assassin's uh, quote, quote, uh, quote unquote, simple beginner HTCP buying and building guide that's posted on the terrific ABS forums. And on here is a list of quick links, including some build outs using different chipsets and CPUs, some parts considerations, uh, example builds with pictures, what to expect, and of course it's a forum environment so you can get all the feedback and throw a question in there if you have one. And I think that's just a great place to check out as well if you're leaning maybe or considering even just building your own home theater PC rather than uh, just going out to a manufacturer like Puget Systems who makes great boxes, but yeah. yeah. I mean, you want to do it yourself? Do the it yourself. The big thing that makes a home theater PC a home theater PC is being quiet, having a Blu-ray drive, totally. um, you know, I, options for expansion. It's you might funny. not even need a Blu-ray drive unless you really want one. Well, yeah, it, it's true. It's actually at this point probably cheaper to have a separate Blu-ray player between, by the time you get between the cost of the Blu-ray drive and the cost of the playback software, we we're talking about that on Monday. Okay. Um, but that said, if you want to have like one controller to rule them all and in yeah. the darkness bind them, that's the nice thing about a home theater PC. And yes, the Inspiron Xeno HD home theater PC, the Xeno is gone. Oh. Much to my sadness, they're actually recommending you build out something based on the Inspiron 620 now. Yeah, I was taking a look at that. Kind of a kind of a cool looking small box. Yeah. So basically, you do a slimline Core i3. Core i3 is enough, more than enough for basic. Uh, home theater duties. If you want to do some serious encoding, I recommend going with the Core i5. Yeah, and that Puget system also, they had options for tuners galore too. So if you wanted to put anything from a cable tuner to an over the air tuner built in, it, it was just a really nice checkbox yeah. option list of stuff there. You could go, you could go wacky yeah. building out an HTP, uh, home theater PC from those guys. So we love it. Twitter user at Dom Corvo sent us this query. I'm looking to add a 5.1 system, but I'm on a tight budget. Less than four hundred dollars. Suggest any HDMI switching preferred? Thank you. Uh, Ankyo comes really? to mind. Actually, I, it's, that's an awesome question. I, I personally would love to know what sub four hundred dollar home theater to box kits that the home that the uh, HD Nation viewers are buying and using. Uh, if you're out there and you're using one of those type of systems right now, you bought it recently. Uh, share your thoughts with us at Techzilla at revision3.com. Tweet us, post it in the forums, yeah. record a short video, throw a carrier pigeon our way. I mean, it's actually amazing. If you, if you take a look at Amazon.com, um, you know, you're looking at uh, Onkyo's HTS 3400 5.1, because you're basically talking about, you know, five channels and a subwoofer, um, you know. Oh, that's not bad. No, that's that's okay. That's a, with speakers too. So two hundred eighty bucks um, for five dot one. You know, fifty five reviews, four and a half stars. Sony Bravia, four stars and thirty six reviews, two hundred bucks. Uh, I, I actually am favoring Samsung and Onkyo right now. Um, I've heard some good things about LG, but yeah, you know, Yamaha, White, Steve, there's some reputable brands. Look, are those for, considered a, like more receivers or with a with a small speaker kit, or is that like a home theater box kit? Do you think? Well, in this case, it's a, you know the Ankios are a receiver theater package, okay. and, which is good. I prefer those rather because the worst ones to me are the ones that integrate a DVD player or Blu-ray player into the receiver. I, I totally agree. Um, but yeah, at this one you're looking at the Ankyo, uh four HDMI inputs, one output, 110 watts per channel, HDMI support for 3D audio return channel, deep color, blah 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 blah, Dolby True HD, TTS HD Master Audio. Nice. And, and the nice thing about that, you know, 300 bucks, you've got a decent amp. You've got a full set of surround sound speakers, and then if you decide you want more, you can upgrade the speakers, and once you upgrade the speakers, you might decide you want a better amplifier, yeah. or HDMI 1.72 comes out. Um, but yeah, a lot of good, I've heard a lot of happiness with Onkyo, a lot of happiness with Samsung. And you know what else we gotta get in? Vizio has some wireless, uh, some new sound bars and wireless speaker kits. I just got three emails from Vizio, so uh, we got all sorts of new goodies coming from them real soon. More so. toys. Yes! <laughs> yes! Hey, before we get into the full list of Blu-ray releases, I want to give a shout out to my buddies over at the Desert People Videos. Blu-ray, jumping trucks, Ooh. mayhem, dust, and silt. Get my grit on. <laughs> we oh. got the links to that one at the show notes. Desert, D-E-Z-E-R-T, people.com. There's some fantastic footage in high def if you want to watch Mayhem, Steel and Dirt, nice. Cactus and I, Men and can Women. I borrow one of those trucks to go over the Bay Bridge sometime? You can drive it. Maybe my the truck. new Bay Bridge that's when not new, quite finished yet. When the new suspension is on the truck, I'll let you drive <laughs> oh, it over. Epic. Just once. <laughs>
This is gonna be expensive. Hey, now it's time for the new Blu-ray releases for September 20th, 2011. First up, Bridesmaids. This 2011 film stars Kristen Wiig and Maya Rudolph and comes in an AVC MPEG-4 codec, DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 soundtrack, and 240 to 1 aspect ratio. High Def Digest gives the video quality 4 out of 5, citing its beautiful and squeaky clean appearance with just a couple of scenes that didn't quite hold up. This release also includes a DVD copy and both the theatrical and unrated versions, which have a runtime difference of about five minutes. Extras include an audio commentary with five of the main actresses, the co-writer and the director, a nine-minute gag reel, a 30-minute making of, and over two hours of deleted and extended scenes, including a deleted character played by Paul Rudd, all of which are spread across a dozen featurettes. Next up, Dombo, 70th Anniversary Edition. This 1941 classic has been released on Blu-ray overseas for a while now and has finally made it to the States. With an MPEG-4 AVC codec, a 133 to 1 aspect ratio and both a DTS HD Master Audio 7.1 and the original Dolby Digital Mono soundtrack, this Region A locked release comes with both a 50 gigabyte Blu-ray disc and a DVD. Blu-ray.com gives the video quality 4.5 out of 5 stars, saying that it stands as a testament to Disney's ongoing devotion to its most treasured classics. Extras include a picture-in-picture -picture behind the scenes commentary on the film's history and production, an option called Disney View that fills in the pillar bars on either side with Disney art, hmm. over an hour of behind the scenes featurettes, two kid-friendly interactive activity activities, and two bonus shorts. Also released this week, Breakfast at Tiffany's 50th Anniversary Edition. Yeah. This 1961 classic is loosely based on the Truman Capote novel of the same name and stars Audrey Hepburn. It comes on a single 50 gigabyte disc with an AVC MPEG-4 codec, a DTS HD 5.1 master audio soundtrack, and a restored mono track. A brand new restoration earns this film five out of five from high def disc news, despite a somewhat soft look that's likely due to the choice made during the film's production. Extras are identical to what came with the Centennial Collection DVD from 2009 and include an audio commentary by one of the producers, eight featurettes that total 96 minutes, plus three photo galleries with a total of 77 images. And as always, check out our show notes at techzilla.com or hdnation.tv for the rest of this week's Blu-ray releases. Hey, it's time to thank one of our sponsors, Gazelle. It's pretty simple. You've got gadgets, gizmos, and games, and the guys at Gazelle want to buy them. Gazelle buys more than 200,000 kinds of electronics, movies, and games for fair prices. They pay really fast, and they even pay the shipping in almost all cases. The iPhone 5 is coming. If you're one of the more than 35 million people who say they're going to buy one, then there's a good chance that you're going to need to sell your old one. Gazelle will be, the, will be only buying 200,000 iPhone 4s, and yours will never be, never be worth more than it is now. So go there now to lock in your quote. It couldn't be simpler. Go to gazelle.com, see how much your stuff is worth, and get paid.